Well, what's going on, YouTubers? It's the Natural Born Thriller, and welcome everyone to WWE Survivor Series 2019 review. The show from November 24th, 2019. They're at the Rosemont, Illinois, located in Chicago, at the Allstate Arena, with the attendance of 13,271 WWE fans in attendance, where it tends to uh, watching WWE wrestlers under the brands of Raw. SmackDown and NXT, where it tends to Raw versus versus SmackDown versus NXT, brand supremacy, under the promotion of War Wrestling Entertainment (WWE). Um, your commentators, you have Vic Joseph, Jerry King Lawler, for Raw. You have Michael Cole, Corey Graves, uh, your commentators for SmackDown, and where it tends to the NXT cha uh, Championship. Michael Cole was part was, was a part of that. Um and we to NXT as well. Nigel McGuinness and Beth Phoenix. And we retains to the Cruiserweight Championship, which it was on the pre-show. Byron Saxton and Eden English. You also got your Spanish commentators, your German commentators. You got your ring announcers in Greg Connington from SmackDown, Mike Rome from Raw, Alicia Taylor from NXT. You got plenty of referees uh, in, involved in all this all this all review. <laughs> not gonna name drop all of them, you know. Not, not gonna, I'm not gonna name drop them at all. So, um, but you got your interviewers: Kayla Braxton, Sarah uh, Schreiber, I think that's how you pronounce her name, and Kathy Kelly. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to your pre-show panel. You got. Jonathan Coachman, who is the, the host of the pre-show panel, um, alongside with his co-host, Troy Caruso, as they got their list of panels of David Otunga, Booker T, Shawn Michaels, and Christian. Now, where we to Shawn Michaels, he, he was he was there, you know, sometimes as, as a guest, and then also Christian as a being there as a guest. And, uh, yeah, that's basically the chips of it. And your pre-show um, co-sponsors were... Um, Sam Roberts and John Bradshaw Lafio. <laughs> and unfortunately, Marvel Bernardo rotates to com commentary for uh, the, the the main card for Survivor Series. <laughs> unfortunately, he couldn't be there because of Corey Graves. Fuck him. <laughs> so, that being said, let's get to. The matches uh, that have it on the, on the show here for retains to um, which brand you know is going to have the breaking rights for this whole brand supremacy war type of thing that they were doing on um, the full survivor series. So first of all, we get to the 10 men inter brand tag team battle royal. That's at 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Order, order of animations were the Forgotten Sons, Steve Cutler, and Wesley Blake from NXT, the Loser House Party. Rabbit Talik and Lindsay Dorado from SmackDown, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder from Raw, Imperium, Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bardell from NXT, Heavy Machinery, Otis and Tucker from SmackDown, Brie Zongo, um, Fon Dongo and Tyler Breeze from NXT, The Revival, Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson from SmackDown, and The OC, Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows from Raw, who, you know, who has won the the best uh, in the you know the best tag team in the World Cup from uh, Crown Jewels to uh, Saudi Arabia, and what does it mean for this match? Nothing because they lost. Uh, but the final two uh, that, was, that was in the bar the battle royal was Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode from SmackDown, as they el they eliminated uh, the Street Profits, Andrew Dawkins and Montez Ford from Raw. So this led, this led to SmackDown with one point. With NXT zero and with Raw zero, and the matches though, oh, I wasn't into it that much because uh, you know it's because um as I'm watching this match, I'm saying to myself, wow, look look how the WWE has treated these uh these these wrestlers uh over the years, not not the Forgotten Sons and not Imperium, just the ones that are all that are, are regularly there. But at the same time, Imperium and um Imperium. And the Vagan Sons are were have fell victim into it as well, or in, into a certain little degree of it. And you you, you can say a little bit with, with the Street Profits as well, but at the same time, 
um, who knows where they're going to be ending up, um, you know, with chances of being part of the Raw brand. Um, I'd rather have them, you know, stay on NXT than the, um, you know, than, than, than the, um, being, being, um, devalued on Monday Night Raw. Because, you know, I'm surprised if this man, uh, you know, didn't, um, give them a seven week notice that, yeah, I'm done with y'all guys. That's the whole Humberto Carrillo uh, story, whole situation there. But anyways, so yeah, the match was whatever. Doesn't mean anything, anyways, and, and it never does. Next, we get to the interbrand triple threat match for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. That's at eight minutes and twenty seconds. You have um, the NXT Cruiserweight Champion Leo Rush from NXT uh, defeating Akira Tozawa from Raw. Also, Kalisto from SmackDown with um, <clears throat> Leo Rush pinning Kalisto in the match, which um, means that Akira Tozawa wasn't wasn't pinned to um, to lose the match, which it means you know um, in the future he gets a title shot, which is happening on on the record on the NXT show. But you know, and I also want to apologize for you know for this late review of things uh, so the series. Um, you know, it is what it is, obviously, but um, no, else, no, else I can do from there. But um, I'll do my absolute best to all, you know, to catch up on it, you know, for my for my content here. But but as far as the match was, I thought the match was good. Um, it was just basically thrown together in the way because you know WWE, you know, this is the these um you know way to um just throw matches in there, you know, for that you know in last minutes. But but the way it was done, I think it, I think it, I think it did all right for you know for, for what it was. But yeah, Leroy is a retaining. Still the Cruiserweight champion, and we'll see where oh, at least to um, um, on NXT and on 205 Live, um, where it tends to leave us um, being the Cruiserweight champion. And finally, the Champions Triple Threat Tag Team Match lasted 14 minutes and 35 seconds. The Viking Raiders, Eric and uh, Ivar, or Ivar, whichever, whichever is, is, um, is pronounced, are Raw Tag Team Champions, defeating the New Day, Big E and Kofi Kingston, the SmackDown Tekken Champions, and the USB Era, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, the NXT Tekken Champions. Um, and, oh yeah, and also it pertains to uh, the Rush winning. Um, now, now it's SmackDown one, NXT one, and when that Raw zero. But after you know giving you the results of the Viking Raiders winning, now it's um, Raw one, SmackDown one, and NXT one, <laughs> all tied up. On the pre-show, which I kind of expected it was gonna be tied up anyways, based on how it was booked. Yeah, as soon as I saw, you know, uh, when Leo Rush won the match, and you know, and after seeing, you know, and after seeing Leo Rush winning, and then we're between the first match you know, with SmackDown winning, I said myself, yeah, we're all gonna win the next one, and sure enough, that's exactly that's exactly what happened. But this match was good. This match was one of those, this was a better match on the show, next to the Cruiserweight Championship. Um, and by the way, Kofi Kingston, former WWE champion, on the pre-show. I don't ever want to see Cole Kingston going after the W Championship belt ever again. Universal Championship belt ever again. Well, not here. He did not, not that he ever wanted that anyways, but point is, he should never get the main event title match ever again. Where it pertains to singles. Because if this is his attitude that he just um you know accepts, you know, being on the pre-show and accepts um the position that he's in, then he should not go ahead, he should not go after that main championship belt uh ever again. Because at this point, as him um, being uh, a main event star, uh, as a singles wrestler, he's done. But, uh, the Rank Raiders ends up beating, oh, let's be in this match, by the way, to get the win. So, but like I said, it was a good match. It was a good tag team match, and I enjoyed it. Despite, you know, how I hate New Day. You know, especially, um, Big E. And I guess I could say this, well, best well wishes to Xavier Woods of his, uh, his injury. That's gonna be he's gonna be, um be gone for God knows how long, but oh hopefully it'll, it'll lead to New Day breaking up. But I digress. <laughs> so that was the pre-show, and you know, to say about that, uh, it was a pre-show. But hey, at least it made it count this time, unlike last year. Because if you remember last year when they did the um, Survivor Series for um you know for Raw and SmackDown at the time, on um, Raw clean sweep and uh SmackDown. You know, we're to uh, gain points for Survivor Series of, of you know, we're to brand supremacy. Even though 
uh, from last year on the pre-show, SmackDown Team won. So they should have got one point, but instead, nope, they said they, it didn't count. But all of a sudden, this year, now all of a sudden it counts. Anyways, so. NXT, SmackDown, and Raw for Survivor Series main show here. So here we go. The opening match was a 5-on-5-on-5 five 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 women's Survivor Series Triple Threat Elimination match. That's the 28 minutes. Um, where you have your NXT team, uh, led by uh, Rhea Ripley, with, along with her, her teammates, Bianca Belair, Kenneth Saray, Io Shirai, and Tony Storm. Where it to Bianca Belair and Io Shirai. Yeah, that's a great idea, WWE. Having Rhea Ripley teamed up with uh, Bianca Belair and Io Shirai, along, you know, especially where it to Kenneth Saray, you know, yeah. Io Shirai and Becca Belair teamed up with Kansa Ray and uh, Rhea Ripley, even though they just they just had a, a War Games match uh, the night after. And on top of that, Tony Storm uh, for some reason now is teamed up with uh, Rhea Ripley after their um their um feud from NXT UK. Yo. Uh, you know all these, all these logics, all these um things I'm picking up uh what pertains to you know what, what just me watching these shows, uh even though I don't watch Raw and SmackDown, um, but yeah, it, it, that that I don't care. All I care about is NXT and NXT, NXT UK. But anyways, uh, but speaking of Raw and SmackDown, you know, um, what pertains to you know me, me not not watching those shows anymore, even though I don't watch the shows anymore, so I do know who's who's part of that show, and just the lineup of the of the teammates that was part of this. Really? So here we go. We got Team Raw. It's it, it led by Shark Flair because of course Shark Flair is going to be the team captain for Team Raw. Um, but her teammates were Natalia, Asuka, Kairi Singh, known as the Kabuki Warriors and the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, and Sarah Logan. Are you kidding me? What has Sarah Logan done to get this uh, spot? She has to be on TV. And, and, and I don't watch the show anymore. But I watch reviews from other people on YouTube. I read results online. The last time I saw Sarah Logan on TV. Or should I say a clip on YouTube basically. Because I, I don't watch the show anymore. The last time I saw Sarah Logan. She was involved with the rest of the group of the women. Scratch the Carmella for the. That green puke. Piece of trash championship belt. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. The, the 24 7 championship. That was the last time I saw uh, of Sarah Logan. Oh, uh, that what, what has she done after that? She's in the same position where Liv, uh, where Liv Morgan is right now. Non TV, doing absolutely nothing. But she gets a spot on, on, on Survivor Series, and Liv Morgan is on the sidelines, you know, on the, on the um, missing card. You know, a missing milk cart, meant to say. Um, we're, we're, we're wondering where is she? And East Street is on is on is on, a, on, a, on a missing milk carton too. But, but also Team SmackDown. You got uh, the team captain for Team SmackDown, Sasha Banks, leading her team her teammates, Carmella, Dana Brooke, Lacey Evans, and Nikki Cross. Now, I don't think Lacey Evans was supposed to meet in this match. I, I, I'm assuming it was going to be uh, Alexa Bliss, but due to Alexa Bliss, uh, you know, being injured, it was, it's unfortunate that that didn't happen. Because, you know, the whole feud between the, the Kabuki Warriors with uh, Alexa Bliss and Nick Cross was supposed to, um, you know, to continue, but because of Alexa Bliss's injuries, I believe it was a shoulder injury or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's not looking good for Cross for Alexa Bliss. You know, at this point, she might she might as well be injury prone. <laughs> but, but I don't think oh, Lacey Evans was gonna be one of, was gonna was was gonna be in this on this match. But I could be wrong, cause you know, cause other than that, uh, who else who else uh, could have been uh, in the shoot? Dana Brooke, Carmella. <laughs> but in a way, it makes sense for Carmella and Dana Brooke because they were attacked by Bianca Belair, who is in this match too, by the way. When when NXT uh, showed up on SmackDown on that on that night where uh, the SmackDown stars couldn't make it because. You know, this this you know this man left her behind. But 
I digress. But yeah, there you go. That was so. Here's the order of eliminations of this match for the for the uh, women's uh, Survivor Series. Nikki Cross eliminated by Bianca Belair by pinfall. Sir Logan eliminated by Bianca Belair by pinfall. Carmilla eliminated by uh, Shura Flair by, by pinfall. Kyrie Sane eliminated by Sasha Banks by pinfall. Dana Brooke eliminated by Oscar by pinfall. Shura Flair eliminated by uh, Lacey Evans um, by pinfall. Oscar uh, basically uh, walked out of the match. She forfeited. Uh, Lacey Evans, eliminated by Natalia by pinfall. Tony Storm, eliminated by Natalia and Sasha Banks by submission. Natalia with the structure and Sasha Banks with the bank statement. Uh, Becca Belair, eliminated by Sasha Banks by pinfall. And I see myself really. Sasha Banks, eliminated by Becca Belair. Natalia, eliminated by Sasha Banks by pinfall. And the way it was, do uh, it was done too, it was so stupid because Natalia was teaming up with Sasha Banks, even though they're both from different brands. And on top of that, then Sasha Banks once attacked Natalia when Sasha Banks came back the night after SummerSlam. And then also on their feud, sort of, um, you know, going somewhere and then it ended uh, abruptly because the whole uh, backlash where uh, Sasha Banks said to Natalia, go to hell and tell your daddy I said hi. Yo, that, that's in Natalia that, um, that work, was working with Sasha Banks and... Or in this match against uh, Rhea Ripley, and and then the, Sasha Banks decided to uh, give her a cheap shot, you know, it's tur on turn on her, and I said, so, "Well, Natalia, you get what you deserve. You shouldn't. Yeah, why, why, why fall for it? You should have known better." So it was, uh, it was uh, between Rhea Ripley and Sasha, Sasha Banks. Now it was, it was between those two because you know, part of the ring. What happened with Io Shirai and Kenzo Ray? Well, there was some kind of brawl going on back, uh, I mean, not uh, backstage, uh, on the outside, I meant to say, uh, on the ring side. You know, with the whole, um, um, you know, match, um, losing control and everything. I don't know how, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I, still, I, still, I still try to figure it out. Also, in Cancer Ray and Io Shirai, they stopped, they, they couldn't, they couldn't go anymore. They couldn't continue. And I'm wondering what, what what's going on here. And the commenters fail to acknowledge what's going on here. Were they eliminated, or what? Were they were they um out of the match and all that? Like no, not not what's said. All of a sudden later on they come out, you know, to be part of the match because you know they were not eliminated. <laughs> and you know on, on commentary you got the um the commentators saying that Ray Ripley is um the future and all that, which she is. But based on what they did here, they they had Ray Ripley cheat. With, 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 with um, Io Shirai and Kenzo Ray to beat Sasha Banks. And I see myself, really? Big Ray Ripley can't beat small Sasha Banks? And why are you protecting Sasha Banks for? That was so, that was so stupid. This, this, this didn't make Ray Ripley, this didn't make Ray Ripley look good. This made, this made it look bad because she, she, it showed that Ray Ripley couldn't beat Sasha Banks on her own. That was a stupid booking there, right? Why, why protect? Why, why do it? Why protect Sasha Banks like that? At this point, you should establish that Rhea Ripley is uh, is, is uh, a heel on the main roster, along with Cancer Ray and Io Shirai, especially Cancer Ray. Like, are you kidding me? That was a stupid. That was a stupid booking. Whoever booked that that finish, you know, you know, to, to protect Sasha Banks like that. Like seriously, man. You gotta do better with that. You gotta do better. You gotta do better with your creative um, mindset. But yeah, so oh, the, the 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 surviving teams were NXT. You know, obviously they won. Rhea Ripley, Kenzo Ray, and Io Shirai. So not NXT got two with SmackDown one and Raw one. And match itself, I thought it was decent. Um, what ruined it for me, basically, um, you know, the annoyance of Carmella, Dana Brooke would just stand there, the same Dana Brooke who always uh, gets, in, go, gets involved anyways, especially uh, if you remember your history with Dana Brooke over her in the Red Rumble and all that, and and also what pertains to um, every year what pertains to Survivor Series, 
Yeah, with uh, Raw for the SmackDown Dallas situation. Yeah, so with her situation, uh, you know, st stand there watching everything. And let's see, what else is annoying me here? Oh, yeah, Sh Charlotte and Asuka, you know, not, not, work not working together and everything. It, it did kind of annoy me. And then Charlotte on for her trouble, she got green mist in her face. And yeah, and uh, yeah, and and, and, and that, oh yeah, with Natalia, um, you know, like an idiot for for Sasha Banks, you know, to team up, team up for her only for Sasha Banks to turn on her. Yeah, smart move, then Natalia. You're a smart woman. Clearly, clearly you're not. And then, and then, the, and then the finish. Rhea Ripley uh, needed help to beat little Sasha Banks. That was so stupid. But but besides that, that was I thought the match was decent. Next we get to the Champions Triple Threat match. It lasted 16 minutes and 45 seconds. Roderick Strong for NXT, who is an NXT North American Champion, uh, versus AJ Styles, the Raw uh, United States Champion, versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura, excuse me. The SmackDown Intercontinental Champion, who is being accompanied by Sami Zayn. Um, a little um, um, knowledge here. Roderick Strong versus AJ Styles happened in Ring of Honor. Roger Strong versus Shinsuke Nakamura happened in Ring of Honor. Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles happened in Japan Pro Wrestling. So seeing these three in the ring together, wrestling each other, yo, you couldn't you couldn't ask for a better a better a dream match here. Now originally it was supposed to be Dan Bryan this match because Dan Bryan was supposed to be the guy to beat Shinsuke Nakamura uh, for the Intercontinental Championship because but well, because all the whole thing with um the for the Saudi Arabia incident on um, plane um, being held, you know, and on top of that, um, they they, they grab a, a number of people on um, the you know that was you know top stars that, um, to, to go with them. It's the you know getting the people that you need to um, to build your stories to. They decided to change plans. So originally Dan Brown was be in this match instead of having his match against Bray Wyatt on on the show. Because the Miz was supposed to be the one in, in the match against uh, the Fiend Bray Wyatt for the for the Universal Title. Um. So Shinsuke Nakamura still ends up being the Intercontinental Champion. And on top of that, but the new design of the uh, of the Intercontinental Championship title belt, by the way. And what well, I gotta say, but this Intercontinental Championship belt looks pretty sick. Looks looks cool, but at the same time, it looks like the the Cruiserweight Championship belt, except it's not purple strap. Oopsie. Oh, okay. Right back. All right, This is the new look of the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Hold on a second. <laughs> Wait. It's, it's, uh, it looks a little blurry there. Maybe if I do it this way, it will be more more better. All right, we go. Let's try again. Yeah, it's that's better. That's better this time. This is the new Intercontinental Championship belt. It looks, it's like the Cruiserweight Championship, but it is a, a better design and, and it's got no purple strap. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's the Intercontinental Championship belt, and I like I like it. It looks cool. Anything, anything better than that WWE Championship belt right now, the main one, you know, but the, the big W, and then the, the Blueberry Championship that Bray Rice, Bray Rice got, and then the, and the rest of those that um, also looks like, um, it's, it's, it's just like the same. It's one matter of time before they change the United States Championship belt now. You know, you know, you know that's going to be coming. But, but when that is. But anyways. So yeah, with, with Nakamura winning, you know, I mean, like, well, I, w I wish he won, but he didn't. But this match, this match was so I thought it was good. Sami Zayn got involved in the match. You know, he got just out to the to the um, steps or ring post to try to remember what he did. Uh, basically, Sami Zayn got involved numerous times in this match. We're not going to call it one because you know, it's, in in George Red matches, there's no rules. You know, Nakamura can't get disqualified. But throughout all this, Nakamura still ends uh, up losing. So here's what happened: AJ Styles goes for the Styles. Well, now Styles clash. Um. 
the phenomenal forearm to cinch connect more hits it and then Roger Strong goes um take out uh Dallas out of the ring. He goes to take to steal the pin. One, two, three. So Roger Strong wins. So now Bobby Roode returns to um NXT now. Um next. Um Roger well, Strong gained the win here. Now it's three. SmackDown one. Raw one. So yeah, this one I was not um liking Nakamura losing here. So far, this has been three years in a row. Nakamura has lost. First one was the the Survivor, you know, the Survivor Series match from that from two years ago. You know, the uh, I'll get to more that I'll talk more about that when I get to the men's uh, later on. You know, it, it's gonna it's gonna make a lot of sense when I, when I bring it up too. And then last year, Nakamura in the Crown Champion versus Seth Rollins, United States Champion. Nakamura loses. And now here we are again, Nakamura, where he's he could um with the help of Sami Zayn could have um, could have won this match, but no, they didn't they didn't give it to him. Um, Roger Strong got the win instead. Like, what's the point with Nakamura being WWE? Like, like what? I mean, he came he came from New Japan, coming to WWE. And it's just um, how they they're booking him. He's just um you know he's, he's, he was there to, to basically to the, to the pinfall. So if if Dan Brown was in the match, would it would it been a different outcome? If, if it was, I'm pretty sure it probably would have been a different outcome if Dan Brown was in was in the match. But because Nakamura was still in the match, you know, still in the current champion. Now, this this is what all we got here. Now, here's the thing too. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of all these guys too. But at the same time, Nakamura does he really need on to be the one to undertake the pinfall here after they choose? Introduce on um, the new Nikon Championship belt to Nakamura, you know, because he's um, because you know, he's in uh, he's the current Nikon Champion. Was it was it very really necessary to do that? You might not you might not just uh, change the, the belt at this point. You might just just kept it um, you know, with the white strap, you know, the, you know, the classic the classic look. But that was the that was the match and. But like I said, the match was good. I still enjoyed the match, uh, despite Nakamura losing. Then we get to the uh, for the NXT Championship, 14 minutes and 10 seconds with Adam Cole, who's the NXT Champion, baby, versus the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne. And this match was good. You know, two of them coming off of, of War Games. Uh, you know, from the respective War, war Games matches, from and uh, from the Takeover. And they had, they delivered pretty good here. They they were selling on the, on their their injuries in this match pretty well. Um, it was a, a nice good storytelling in this match. Anko had a, a sick ass move. Um, you know with the um the Pamina um the Pamina, uh, Sunrise onto Pete Dunne on the apron. That was a sick move there. That um look at uh, that was could be it for Pete Dunne, but it's it to kept on going. Yo, this was um, this was, uh, obviously could be one one of my favorite uh, matches on on the night besides Bray Wyatt versus um, you know Daniel Bryan for the for the Universal Championship. Uh, in the end, I expected um Adam Cole to retain here because he's gonna be fusing with Tommaso Trump, Ciampa. Uh, whenever they decided to, um to um to um book that match um whenever it's gonna happen between Adam Cole and Ciampa for the NXT Championship, that's gonna be a match that um people are really looking forward to see, but. But yeah, uh, coming into this match, I knew Al Cole was wasn't going to lose here, and, and sure enough, we get to the, we get to that point where Al Cole ends up being Pete Dunne. Um, but yeah, either way, great ma great match on uh, these two pull and hopefully we get we'll get we'll get more of the of Al Cole and Pete Dunne in the future. Um, and I think I think we um it will uh, suit more on. On NXT than than um on you know on main shows of of WWE with teams to Raw uh, you know sure they were Raw and SmackDown. Then we get to um the the Fiend the Bray Wyatt the WWE Universal Championship on the line here less uh, less than ten minutes and ten seconds versus Daniel Bryan. This match of our and the match here had um red lighting. And this match was uh, was pretty damn good. Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt had matches before, and this uh, this was no different. You know, despite the the, the, the character changes of, of you know, in a way with Daniel Bryan for just a little bit, but it's, uh, but more, a lot more with, with Bray Wyatt with, with, with him being the fiend. 
and it was a good storytelling here where it seems to Dan Bryan where uh, he just want to he does not want to bring back the yes movement but he felt like he, he needed to do, bring back the yes movement uh where it to how he's doing it too kind of like how he did with 20, 2014 um when he um betrayed the wife from me at the time and and everything that the fiend um you know was game was was um taking a lot of punishment from Dan Bryan he kept no selling everything you know, on that because you know that's that's the fiend um but yeah with Dan Bryan uh when he when he decided to do the, do the whole yes thing um he thought it would be enough but it wasn't enough because at the end of the, end of the day it was the fiend Bray Wyatt gained the win over Dan Bryan still the Universal Champion and this was a great match now we get to the five on five on five men's Survivor Series Triple Threat Elimination match that lasted 29 minutes and 25 seconds. Team SmackDown that's led by Roman Reigns, along with, with his teammates Braun Strowman, King Corbin. He got his name back, Mustafa Ali, and the name will not be going by. Oh, we're going to Chad Gable. I'm not going by that other name that, he, that they're going with. You know, that's that's to, to me that's garbage. Uh, versus Team Raw, which is led by. Um, the, the Tweet Slayer, Seth Rollins, all of his teammates, Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Ricochet. Well, Ricochet, who looked like he was wearing a, a, like a inspiring outfit of Batman Beyond, which I thought was pretty cool. And on top of that, with him being on, on Raw, because Raw is, is color red, so it, 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 it looked, looked cool. And Team NXT, led by Team Captain Tommaso Ciampa and his teammates. Uh, Damian Priest, Matt Riddle, uh, Keith Lee, and the United Kingdom Champion, the leader of Imperium, Walter. Okay, here we go. Order of the Eliminations. Walter was the first guy to eliminate from, from the match. He was eliminated by Drew McIntyre by pinfall. Now, Walter was getting cheered in Chicago. Which I was not I was not expecting that. I was not expecting Walter getting any cheers at all. I was not even expecting any fans to know who, who this guy is. But and then when they saw him performing in this match and they, they you know it, it was getting behind him. Cause obviously some people watch watches of you know what he does before he hits up with the E you know months ago. And you know, on top of that, oh, oh, he's, uh, uh, you know, with his name being out there, with Tinsley um, finally making his, um, you know, his, um, his, his appearance in WWE. You know, with, with, with his matches with Pete Dunn, Tyler Bate, Kushida. Mm. And then on top of that, with him wrestling against Seth Rollins. I didn't see that match, because I, you know, I don't, I don't heard the match was decent, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care to watch it anyways, because it was all just, um, just, you know, in the way to try to make Seth Rollins look good and everything, whatever. And on top of that, um, based on how I heard about the booking of that match, Walter could, you know, I guess it end by some kind of um, bullshit finish, whatever. So here we have Walter here. By the way, what we seen how he wrestles too, you know, with him being, um, you know, big. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember if he's the same stuff like, uh, like Ross Stroman. I'm pretty sure he's not, but but he's, he, he's, he's close to there. But at the same time, you see how this guy wrestles, Walt, Walter. He uh, wrestles pretty, you know. He wrestles, he wrestles pretty heavy, and, and he moves pretty fast too. As, a, as a, you know, as for a big guy, and he's kicking um Braun Strowman's ass. He's kicking Drew McIntyre's ass in this match. You know, he's um he's killing. He was killing it. He's especially Braun Strowman. And then all of a sudden, one Claymore kick to the face of uh, to Walter, and he gets pinned. And the crowds were hating this, hating it so much that they were chanting bullshit. This is your NXT, um, you uh, up and coming guy, you know, from from um, not just from, from regular NXT for uh, NXT UK. This is your United Kingdom champion. This is a guy who's a, who's a leader of, of his own faction, Imperium. And this is how you book Walter. You have him get eliminated um, by pinfall. I have you, you should, you know, you know, having him, you know, dominating the match, you know, for um, for a little bit for his team, and then all of a sudden, one one finishing move kit on kit, um, kill, kills his momentum there. This reminds me of, you know, two years ago with Shinsuke Nakamura, you know, for his team against, you know, Raw for the SmackDown situation, with Nakamura being part of Team SmackDown. Nakamura was kicking everyone, um, um, you know, from Team Raw's asses. 
And then, and then all of a sudden, Brock Strowman gets to take some move, one finishing move. Nakamura's gone. And then, and then last year, we're against the Walter, you know, Samoa Joe. And I knew, and I knew this was coming too, but from last year, Samoa Joe's gonna be the first guy to eliminate from, um, from, from, from the match. And sure enough, it, that's exactly what happened. And, and the army, it was to Drew, Drew McIntyre. Same situation with Walter here. Same situation with what happened with Samoa last year happened with, with Walter, with Drew McIntyre. No, it's not. It's not. Drew McIntyre. I'm not. I'm not blaming Drew McIntyre. It's it's, it's 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 the people that were booking this. I, I blame them. And also a little uh, more since last year too as well. Finn Balor for Team Raw, you know, kicking on the asses of of, the, of SmackDown um, last year and everything. Only for him. I can't remember who it was. I believe it was Randy Orton, if I'm if I'm mistaken. Where one finishing move to uh, Finn Balor after you know you know um when you know kicking kick ass for his team, and then one finishing move that's it he's done. How the fuck are you gonna book a Walter to um to lose like that? You know you know with the fans you know liking this guy, cause uh, cause again I was I was not expecting um him to get in this pop. I was not expect, expecting him, you know you know to get over like this. And this is how you book the this is how you book Walter. This is why this is why no one can't get over. And and when when you, and when and when someone doesn't get over, the WWE wonder why no one's um, subscribed to their networks. Thank God, I cancel my my subscription. What I gotta say is, um, Disney Plus is bigger and better than the WWE Network. But yeah, I'll. I'll I was fucking pissed when this happened. Walter first got eliminated. And then something pissed me off later on. We'll get to that later. So here we go. Chad Gable eliminated by Kevin Owens by pinfall. Kevin Owens eliminated by Tommaso Ciampa by pinfall. Damian Priest eliminated by Randy Orton by pinfall. Excuse me. Randy Orton eliminated by Matt Riddle. And then Randy Orton gets him an RKO. And then King Corbin as a pinning Matt Riddle. So yeah, Matt Riddle, Matt Riddle as a game of the day. Um, alright, so here we go, here's, here's, here's the, um, the layer part I'm talking about, Braun Strowman, now I, I believe Braun Strowman was a uh, clean more kick on the outside of the, of the ring by Drew McIntyre, and then Braun Strowman, um, he tracked into the ring, you know, because you know, in the Rara Series matches, they're, they're countouts, so he tracked it back to the ring, but he gets counted out, and I say to myself, are you kidding me? You protected Braun Strowman, but you don't protect Walter. Why are you protecting Braun Strowman? He doesn't. He doesn't want anything, anyways. And even, even when you ha haven't tried to win something, you know, you know, you, you don't go all, all the way with it. But uh, but he's only he's only fitting what pertains to uh, you know going to the attacking titles, right? Even with, 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 with a child from last year, and then uh, what pertains to um, with Seth Rollins from uh, re recently this year. You know, being a, a, a transitional uh, tag team champion. But for, and for what? To, to bury the... Yeah, you know, I know for what. To bury the tag team division. Because this man, this, this man is not a fan of tag team wrestling. Just like he's not a fan of women's wrestling. So, what was the point of protecting Braun Strowman here when he, he doesn't even win anything anyways? This was, this was, this was all complete bullshit too. Protecting Braun Strowman on by getting by getting counted out, but you don't do, you don't do it for Walter. Walter gets pinned uh, and he's gone, but Braun Strowman gets on count out and he's gone. And, and if anything, if any, Braun Strowman should have been pinned to uh, to get to get eliminated. Especially with how especially the way how, how they've been booking Braun Strowman. Wow. Like why even bother protecting him like like that? At this point, no one, no one cares about Braun Strowman anymore. To, to the majority of the fans, maybe they, maybe some of them do. But based on how they've been booking Braun Strowman, no, who, why, why would you want to care about this guy? And why would you care about him losing, you know, you know, you know, getting protected like this? It's not, he's not going anywhere anyways. Isn't that, isn't that like they're going to put the WWE Championship belt on him in the, in the future? Or the, or, or the Universal Championship belt? You know, because he's on SmackDown. It's pointless.
Ricochet gets eliminated by King Corbin by pinfall. Mustafa Ali gets eliminated by Seth Rollins by pinfall because uh, King Corbin was being a dick, uh, distracting his teammates. Drew McIntyre gets eliminated by Roman Reigns by pinfall. Yeah, the same Drew McIntyre who eliminated Walter by pinfall. And then he, um, I, think, I think he was the reason uh, a brushroom getting, getting kind of out uh, you know, for him to get to me. Only for him to get, you know, to, you know, to lose to Roman Reigns at the end of the day. You because know, Roman Reigns is Drew McIntyre's kryptonite. Drew McIntyre can, can not get a break from, from Roman Reigns. That's what's, that's what's funny about this. And yet people, and yet, um, people are still um, ha um, having hopes that Drew McIntyre is going to be um, a, to a top uh, contender, a top champion. How how he's gonna be doing that if he's on losing like this? At one point, I believe he was. He was uh, at one point. I thought he was, and that was last year. This year, and moving forward, I don't see it because Vince McMahon doesn't give a fuck. King Corbin gets eliminated by Tommaso Ciampa because he was being a dick so much that Roman Reigns had enough of him, and he, he just said to uh, beat him up, beat him up, and all that. And Trump, and Trump took advantage of it. Once Trump gets eliminated by Seth Rollins, which I thought was bullshit, but I digress. Um, Seth Rollins uh, eliminated by Keith Lee by pinfall, and finally it was between Keith Lee and Roman Reigns. At this point, it was it was now NXT and SmackDown, and matches. So, you know, I would love to see Keith Lee versus Roman Reigns. You know. You know, whenever they decided to do that match, you know, but that, that depends when Keith Lee uh, gets moved on to the roster, you know. But this match, this match always looked pretty good between Roman Reigns and Keith Lee. And in the end, it was um, Roman Reigns getting the win for his team. So now SmackDown. Two. Thanks, T. Three. Raw. One. So yeah, um, Roman Reigns won, and he gives a, a, a fist bump to Keith Lee. Basically, put him over. And and then and, they have, and then also I, I heard reports you know afterwards that Vince McMahon likes you know Keith Lee because of this main event that he had um you know because of, the, of this um this just uh, this performance against uh, Roman Reigns so yeah Vince McMahon likes Keith Lee just like he liked the Mustafa uh, you know Mustafa Ali just like he liked like the Chad Gable just like he liked like the uh, Alistair Black and where where is Alistair Black by the way just like he liked Andre Ossie and Almas and where and where is he where is he at. Vince McMahon liking people in WWE don't mean shit. It's the same thing with Braun Strowman. He likes Braun. Look, no, Vince McMahon likes Braun Strowman too. And look, and look where he's at right now. So, this whole report of Vince McMahon liking you know Keith Lee doesn't mean fucking shit, anyways. So, anyways. But yeah, the match is, uh, um, and by the way, the match itself, just despite the whole thing with having with Walter, and then the bullshit, con you know, the mission by, you know, Braun Strowman counting out, you know, cause, you know, cause, you know, they can't afford him to lose clean. Yeah, but yeah, and some other things that on that, um, that, not, not a lot, on normally in this match, but at the same time, the match itself, I thought it was good. You know, this was uh, obviously, um, everyone's favorite match on, on the show here, besides, you know, Bray Wyatt versus Dan Bryan, and also, Alan Cole versus Pete Dunne. So, there you go. Now we get to the no holds barred match for the WWE Championship. That's a seven minutes. <laughs> but it wasn't a complete squash. You know, and I think you know what I'm talking about. The WWE Champion, Brock Lesnar, being accompanied by Paul Heyman versus Rey Mysterio Jr. Rey Mysterio Jr. looking like the Joker from this year's um, Joker movie. Which I thought was uh, very cool. And then people will start making fun of Mysterio uh, online by saying he's Doink Mysterio. <laughs> Basically a reference of Doink the Clown from, you know, back in, back in the old days of WAF, you know, from, from the 90s. Um, so yeah, this was a no-holds bar match. I was, I, was I was worried this could be a, a no-holds bullshit fight. Like with Ambrose Zimmer and Lesnar. Um, but I digress. Uh, match began. Mysterio had to um, get went outside the ring to get the pipe, and he gets in the ring. Brock Lesnar uh, retreats. And I don't remember how Brock Lesnar got the uh, um, the upper hand on this, but but he he did. And eventually, he gets him uh, multiple German suplexes. And all of a sudden, Dominic, the son of Rey Mysterio Jr., comes out. Dominic has a towel. He dropped it, and he picked it back up. Uh, so, okay, that was that was kind of a, of a botch there. 
And then Brock Lesnar takes his howl and he throws it out. He's going to beat up on Dominic, but then all of a sudden, Ray Mysterio Jr., boom, low blows him. And then Dominic does the same thing, boom, low blows him. And then, and then, Ray Mysterio Jr. and Dominic, this was, this was cool. They did the 619 to Brock Lesnar. Basically, it's kind of like how I compare um, Gohan and Goku from, you know, the, 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 Cell, the Cell Game Saga. Where, you know, obviously, Goku was dead, um, but still. With the whole thing with um, Gohan with one arm, and then they, they did the father the father son Kamehameha way. It's kind of like with that one. It's, it kind of reminds me of this one with Mysterio and Dominic, you know, because you know, um, they do a six one nine, and I, and, I, and I was calling it, I was saying that the the father the father son six one nine. Um, and I thought Dominic did, uh, did pretty good with the six one nine, and then he did the frog splash, and then Rey Mysterio Jr. did the, the frog splash. They go for the pin. I said myself, oh wait, is this gonna be over? Like, like that would be uh, that would that would been great, but it didn't. Uh, in the end, at the end of the day, Brock Lesnar ends up winning. He ends up destroying Dominic, and then he ends up destroying Mysterio, and still WWE champion. But damn it, man, are you kidding me? Like, you couldn't have Mysterio win here, especially on like this. That that would like like that would that would that would that would have been fine. You know, fans were were, were, were loving it too. They were, they were um. They were excited, uh, you know, to see um something like um, that. This was booked um very well, and you you got you got them in the palm of your hands, and you could and you, and you didn't go all the way with it. I mean, Brock Lesnar can can afford a loss here. I mean, God knows you could um he he, he could force, he could afford a loss to Seth Rollins twice. Jesus Christ, but but yeah um but. Yeah, this match was fun. It was pretty. Fun. It was pretty fun the way it was. Um, it was, it was booked, and, and and the match overall it was decent. But uh, it ends up being more fun when Dominic got involved. But, but man, you could just give the belt to Mysterio. Like, it's not. It's not. It's not. That's nothing. It's not like Brock Lesnar's gonna be there on Raw anyways. And sure enough, he wasn't. After here, after I'm here, the results. Yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, your 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 WWE champion of of, of Monday Night Raw doesn't even show up on the night after the Survivor Series. So, what was the what was the, what was the problem not having um, Rey Mysterio Jr. being WWE Champion on Raw? I mean, eventually brought this to his rematch later on. You know, he could get match for his rematch and all that. Like, you know, you could you could have done that. Brought this to can afford a loss in WWE, but they didn't go with it, and they, and this is what we're stuck with. No, I kind of guess Brock Lesnar. I'm, I'm a fan of Brock Lesnar. No, don't get me wrong. Um, I think he's doing a great job being WWE Champion too, though. But I'll, 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 I'll tell you one thing, in between this match, at least um, Rey Mysterio Jr. lasted uh, on more than Kofi Kingston did. <laughs> Just saying. And there's someone like Rey Mysterio Jr. who, who I would not mind seeing in the main event spot for the main event title. Because at least Mysterio Jr. carries himself on as, as a serious contender, unlike Kofi Kingston, New Day Kofi Kingston. But I digress. And finally, the main event. Which was uh, very debate debatable for some for some people too, and and just based on the matches I was um was presented to, is the champions triple threat match. That's at eighteen minutes and ten seconds. You have Shayna Baszler, the NXT Women's Champion, versus Becky Lynch, the Raw Women's Champion, versus Bailey, the SmackDown Women's Champion. And well, I have a way to book this match to be the main event. No, none, none of us were expecting this match to be the main event. We all thought maybe it could be you know, the WWE Championship or maybe the you know the, the Universal Championship, but instead, it was this match. And some people were speculating: Is Ronda Rousey returning? Is she going to come out to uh you know to to make the, uh you know to have a uh, you know Shayna Baszler win? Now I was I was not thinking that. I, I was I, I remember I was thinking to myself: Why is this the, Why is this the main event? Like, it, is this going to be a, a show stealer match? It wasn't, but. I thought it was decent. I thought it was alright. Some people thought it was boring because there was they were, you know they were they were bored during you know during, during the entire match here because you know there was, they were want they wanted to see something happen here in this match. And they didn't get what they got here, you know, because they were expecting Ronda Rousey to show to make a return here. And and when they didn't get when they didn't, when they didn't get that, we got just a regular match here that didn't need to be the main event of Survivor Series. I'll tell you one thing though, based on this match, it was bot free because at least with this match from Survivor Series between Shannon Baszler versus 
Bailey versus Becky Lynch, it was way better than the WrestleMania main event this year, where we seen Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch. And, uh, and it all evolved in, in one person. Uh, that that's in the match too, and that's Becky Lynch. So she was there. Um, who was the problem on on, on WrestleMania? Was it Charlotte Flair, or was it Ronda Rousey, or was it a case of both? But anyways, um, yeah. So anything, if, if anything, I thought the WrestleMania um main event was. Uh, I mean, excuse me. Uh, I meant to say this. I. I thought the Survivor Series main event of 2019 was better than the WrestleMania main event of 2019. That's what I meant to say. Um, so, in the end, Shayna Baszler wins. She uh, beat Bailey. She uh, made her tap out with uh, the Karakula clutch. After the match, um, she you know she slipped on the on the on the ramp. I mean not on the ramp, but um, on the on the broadcast table. Also, Becky Lynch attacks her because she was um, at the broadcast table because um, I think she was Sam on the uh, earlier earlier. And then basically, Becky Lynch was being a sore loser by attacking Shayna Baszler and everything. And then she stands tall, and the show went off the air. And I see myself, um, okay. That was a weird ending for Survivor Series. I didn't, I don't get it. And again, people were, were, were waiting to see if Ron Ross was, was going to come out. And they didn't get, they, they didn't even get that. And again, I was not one of those people that thought Ron Ross was going to be there. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why people thought that. Anyways, um, but at the same time, the way that they'll be on both this, you know, by having the, you know, these women to be in the main event of Survivor Series, why, why would you do that? Why, why would you have people thinking um, that Ron Ross was, was going to show up? Especially what pertains to Shane Baszler bringing up. I think she, no, not Shane Baszler. It was Becky Lynch who brought Ron Rousey at one point. Uh, what pertains to Shane Baszler and Becky Lynch uh, having the, um, the, the first face to face on on Raw. But yeah, you know, it was just an odd uh, placement for for this uh, main event spot. Again, it should it should have went to either Brock versus Mysterio or at least a uh, Wyatt versus a uh, Brian. Or but yeah, why not have the men's be the on um, the main event? You know, the men's um Survivor Series match. That, that that match I thought it was a show stealer. That match was great. But I digress. But yeah, that was a, that was a show. Um, I guess this is the part where I um, took my, my highlights of the night, which, which probably gave me one moment. Here are my highlights of the night, where we change to uh, WWE Survivor Series 2019. Swore for the night, we had to go to Dominic showing up and doing what he did with, uh, in his performance with Rumi Street Jr. against Brock Lesnar from the WWE Championship match. Promo of the night, we had to go to Bicky Lynch, and yes, and there was promos uh, during, during the show. Bicky Lynch was going to a, a great promo, where we take to her, uh, you know, going up against uh, a a Shayna Baszler and a Becky Lynch. I mean, a Shayna Baszler and a Bailey, excuse me. Uh, you know, and I thought she uh, delivered a pretty good promo. You know, ever since Becky Lynch has um reached up her game from you know ever since last year, in you know at uh, you know at the, at the summer was over and everything, Becky Lynch has been on her game with, with her promos. And, and and she's not feeling more confident than she's ever been before. So yeah, um, so this this the promo tonight definitely goes to Becky Lynch. A uh, video promo tonight. We had to go to the WWE Championship based on the whole thing with Bray Wyatt versus Dan Bryan with their history together and everything all that. And then we, you know, and then we were released to um, you know, in, in the present time. So it was, that, that that was a good video package. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant to say the WWE Championship. My apologies. At first, uh, that was going to be the one, you know, the, the Universal Championship it was going to be my video package on the night. But it was, it was the whole thing with Brock Lesnar and. Remistry Jr. But the whole team with um, Brock was attacking Remistry Jr. and then attacking Dominic and then the whole team with Kane with Asuka's coming in and everything else that was going around that and what led to this it led to this point uh, as a power series. That was a great that was a great uh, real package um uh, for his, for um to build up on their match for the power series and then um and then when we get to the match, you know, it all uh, came to influences but at the same time, Mysterious sure went over. If you if you want to if you want the storytelling to make to be to be good with this, um, based on what you did with the view package here, Mysterio should, should have revenge, and what better revenge you could have gone with by having Mysterio take away the, the one thing that that's important to Brock Lesnar, the W Championship. Morons. Moment of the night, Walter game 
getting enchanted in in Chicago, despite you know him being eliminated the way he got eliminated at Survivor Series. Um, but this is my moment tonight because I again I was not expecting Walter gain cheer. I was not expecting Walter, Walter to get over, and he did. But who cares at the end of the day? Because WWE fucked it up anyways. Because it's in the na it's in, it's in the na it's in the nature. Again, morons. Uh, interesting of the night. We're about to go to remember Mister Junior. What pertains to him, his Joker costume, you know, his, his version of the Joker costume. And, and here's another thing too. Remember Mister Junior, his he dressed up like Joker before, back at WrestleMania twenty five, I think it was. Yes, WrestleMania twenty five. Remember Mister Junior was uh, the Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, with, with his um, yeah, again with his style of, of, you know, of you know, you know, Remember Mister Junior. With, um, with him being a, luch a luchador and all that, with his luchador mask and everything. Um, especially what pertains to him being like um, the Flash, Daredevil, Wolverine, and um, Spider Man, um, Captain America. Can't remember what else he did. Or is it Joker? I don't remember if he did um a Batman one. I don't remember if he did or not, but but he's he's done with Joker. You know that, that 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 that's from Batman, and here he is with Joker again. But this is a different Joker, um, because this Joker, uh, did not meet did not meet Batman. You know, because, you know based on um you know, to to the vision of, of let's see what's his name again, Todd Phillips. I think it, I think that's his name. The you know the director of Joker of Joker twenty nineteen on film. But yeah, that was the joke. That was the um to me it was interesting night because you know because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm a fan of Joker. He and believe it or not, folks, Joker is my favorite my favorite villain, my first favorite villain. You know, my first favorite villain ever. Um, you know, routines. You know, to um to to villains and then and then at, and then um next to him is Dark Vader. Um, moving night. Alan Cole's uh, Pamela Sunrise on the apron to, to, to Pete Dunn, which it was it was pretty sick. <laughs> Finishing up the night, we'll have to go to Brock Lesnar's F5 to Rey Mysterio Jr. Uh, performance of the night, we'll have to go to, or should I say performances of the night, we'll, we'll have to go to both Alan Cole and Pete Dunn. Uh, show stealer of the night, we'll have to go to the men's. Survivor Series match, and finally the the, the match of the night. Well, how to go? Well, and the match of the night goes to the secondary champ championship match. The second the secondary championship match means you know you know the the Intercontinental title, United States title, and the North American title. Basically, Roger Strong, AJ Styles, and Shinsuke Nakamura. That was um my match of the night. And again, you got Alan Cole and Pete Dunne was a great match, which I thought that was a show stealer. Even Dan Bryan and, and Bray Wyatt had a great match. Um, I'm sorry, I, I mean, Alan Cole and Pete Dunne wasn't a show stealer, I meant to say. Uh, the, the Men's Survivor Series match, the Men's Survivor Series match was, was a show stealer, based on how that was booked. Just, again, despite the, uh, the little nitpickings of the other ones that, um, that I already picked out, you know, the whole thing with Walter, Braun Strowman, and whoever. Um, so yeah, um, there you go. So yeah, again, um, so still tonight is the men's uh, Survivor Series, and the match of the night is the um, Nakamura Styles and, and and Strong. That that match was um to me, was my match of the night. And our overall story for the show for WWE Survivor Series 2019, the show from November 20, 2019. Let me just double check that it's the right date. No, actually, it's the twenty fourth. My my apologies. Um, November twenty fourth, twenty nineteen. Um, the, yeah, match. Uh, the show itself, I thought it was good. About time, WWE. Like how, how, how? What was the last time we were having a great Survivor Series match? I mean, a great Survivor Series show. I meant to say, what other than other than twenty sixteen? You know, based based on uh, how that how that was um 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 was being presented and everything. You know. Uh, other than 2016, what was the last time? What was the last time we ever had a a, a, a good Survivor Series uh, pay per view? So finally, we guess we finally got a good uh, Survivor Series pay per view here. Now it wasn't better than t Takeover. Don't get me wrong. Takeover was still was still a better show uh, during Survivor Series weekend, but 
But hey, at least uh, they did a good job here in Forza Virus Series uh, 2019. Keep it up. But at the same time, it doesn't matter because I'm not subscribed to them anymore. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm probably going to be done with them anyways. Because uh, you know, there's, uh, there's alternatives out there anyways. But anyways, um, I, it's not here or there. And I'm not talking about Disney. <clears throat> but speaking of Disney, Disney Plus, 10, over 10 million um, you know, subscriptions to uh, everyone that's that's um that's that's got uh, you know to uh, you know that that signed up with um Disney Plus, the network, they came in and touched um ten million. Hell, let alone they came in they came in and touched one million. And I wonder why. Maybe, maybe if you get rid of this old C now, oh man, this man, and 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 had the balls. To, uh, to give us a better product, maybe you'll get more you know subscribers for your subscriptions for the W network. Maybe people won't, won't, won't be on um, you know be be drawn away away from the um, from the product. Anyways, sorry about that. So yes, my overall rank for the show for W East of Series 2019 from November 24th, 2019. I'm gonna go with a six out of ten. And that's the best thing I can do. Six out of ten. Good show. And with that being said, thank you all for watching for It's Natural Born Thriller saying peace on the streets for this is your WWE Survivor Series 2019 review. Until next time, folks, more routines to uh, upcoming uh, reviews uh, for WWE, you know, especially routines to the pay per views, because I, I don't do Raw no more, I don't do SmackDown no more. And uh, as far as 205 Live, I'm counting on the days of me, um, you know, no, no, no longer covering 205 Live. Not, not because of what they not because they're dumb. You know the you know the, the performers and uh, and the you know and the step and the steps. It's just the way that on um, their their you know that this man is presenting them by not presenting them at all. But that being said, you all take care and peace. Okay, it's time for me to go now. Peace.